Hello everyone, welcome back to the final lecture of the unit and of the course. Um, this is lesson five of the seven unit, systems of linear equations. And we're gonna talk about the properties of systems of linear equations, some special cases. Uh, for about the first page and a half, there's not a whole lot of writing, so I just thought we'd follow along on the big screen. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three possibilities um, of solutions for systems of linear equations. The first one being having one solution. And up until now, the entire time, we have talked about one solution problems. I have mentioned maybe it has no solutions, uh, maybe they never cross, things like that. Um, but we have talked about one solution problems up to now. We can also have situations where we have no solutions. And I'm gonna show you how to pick out those times as well as infinite solutions. That means every single point on both of the lines is the solution to the problem. And again, I will show you what we mean by that. Um, so, first of all, we have one solution. That is our usual intersecting lines. Uh, you can see on the screen and on your paper that we have two lines here that cross at a particular point. Doesn't really matter what point that is, but there is only one point that they cross at. Uh, there is one single solution. You'll notice that the equations of the lines are given here. There is nothing similar about them. Like the, the slopes are not the same, the intercepts are not the same. And that is the key. Uh, if the two lines have different slopes, they will intersect at exactly one point and the system will have one solution. So the slopes are different. Therefore, we have different, uh, we have only one solution. That is really, really important. Uh, we can also have a situation where we have no solutions. And when we have no solutions, that means lines never cross. And the only time lines never cross is when they're parallel lines. And if we think back um, a couple, actually to the previous unit, I believe, we need uh, parallel lines had slopes that were the same. Uh, they had different y-intercepts but they had slopes that are the same. You can notice here uh, we have slopes of negative four-fifths and negative four-fifths. If the two lines have equal slopes and different y-intercepts, then they will never intersect and the system will not have a solution. So you can see these two lines are parallel. They will never intersect. They do not on our graph and they do not on the outsides because they have the same slope. If they have the same slope, they go down and over at the same rate and they will never cross but they uh, are parallel to one another because they have different y-intercepts. They are at different levels on the graph. We can also talk about situations where we have infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. Infinite solutions occur when the lines have equal slopes and uh, the y-intercepts are also equal. So if the two lines have equal slopes and equal y-intercepts, then every point on one line will be a point on the other line as well. All points are therefore solutions. Uh, if we take um, this and we move it around a little bit, uh, if we divide both sides by two, okay, we would say y is equal to five over six x plus one half. And that is the same line as that one. So in these, solu uh, in these problems that have infinite solutions, sometimes the lines are gonna look different, but they are going to end up being the same if you manipulate them a little bit. You can see if we have, this looks like one line, but it's actually two laid on top of one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a way to determine the number of solutions every single time. The first step, is to write both equations in slope-intercept form. Check the slopes. If they're different, it's one solution. If they're the same, you need to move to step three. Uh, if the y-intercepts are different, there are no solutions, and if they are the same, it is infinite solutions. So what we're going to do for the next three, maybe four problems, is we're going to rearrange them into y equals mx plus b form, and then determine what their slopes and y-intercepts are. Let's get into it, everyone. Let's see, determine the number of solutions the following systems. We have x plus y is equal to negative two, and we have negative two x minus two y is equal to four. This one's really easy, just move the x over. y is equal to negative x minus two, 
This one's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to move the x over and divide everything by 2. So we have negative 2y equals 2x plus 4. Then divide everything by minus 2. I get y is equal to negative x minus 2. I then can compare these two equations. The slope for both of them is negative 1. So that means that there is, it's not one solution. The slope needed to be different for there to be one solution. Um, now I need to check the intercepts. The intercepts for both of them is negative 2. If the slope and the y-intercept are both the same, we are looking at uh, infinite, that's what that means, the sideways 8 solutions. They are actually the same line. Uh, so the solutions are infinite. That is what we would be looking for. Okay. We can move on to the next problem that we're given. This one we have 4x plus 6y equals negative 10. I'm going to write the other one over here this time. Negative 2x minus y equals negative 1. I'll rearrange this one first into y equals mx plus b form. Move the x over, so that's 6y equals negative 4x minus 10. Divide everything by minus 6. y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 5. No, it should be plus 5 thirds, because they're both negative. So I have the slope and I have the y-intercept. I can do the same here. I have negative y is equal to 2x minus 1. Uh, flip the signs to make this positive. y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. I can compare their slopes now. The slope for this one is 2 thirds and the slope for this one is negative 2. Slopes are different, therefore we have one solution. And the good part is that it doesn't ask us to find out what that solution is. So that's all we need to do. Uh, there may be problems in the future that it says find out how many solutions there are and then write those solutions, um, but not in this case. One solution is good enough. We'll move on to the next problem where we have 3x plus y equals negative 1 and we have negative 6x minus 2y equals 12. This one's really easy to rearrange. Move the 3x over y is equal to negative 3x minus 1. This one's a little bit more complicated, but no big deal. Move the 6x over. We have minus 2y equals 6x plus 12. Divide both sides by minus 2. We're left with y is equal to minus 3x. 12 divided by negative 2 is minus 6. So I can compare the slopes. The slopes for both of these is minus 3. So that eliminates one solution right away. Uh, the y-intercept here is negative 1, and the y-intercept here is negative 6. So those are different. Therefore, they have the same slope but different intercepts, and they have uh, no solutions. They never intersect because these are parallel lines. Uh, if they were parallel but uh, had the same intercept, then they would be the same line and there would be infinite solutions. But different intercepts means that there are no solutions to this problem. We can now do the last problems together of the course in this kind of a sentimental time. Here we go. We have the equation negative 3x plus y is equal to 9. And what we want to do is we want to write first another any equation that has one solution. Uh, we're then gonna do a line, any line that has no solutions, and then any line that has infinite solutions, but let's focus on the one solution first. We gotta arrange this into y equals mx plus b form first. We're gonna move the three x over. Y is already by itself then, and that's real nice. We have y is equal to three x plus nine. So we want to have any line that has um, one solution with this line. So that means any line that has a different slope. So one, let's go y is equal to negative 15 um, 31 x plus 23. 
anything that has a different slope. You could have written anything here as long as it was different than three. Anything that is not three. Um, any something, uh, some equation that has no solution. Uh, no solution would be something that has the same slope but a different intercept. Something like y is equal to 3x plus 8. Same slope but different intercept would have no solution. And to find infinite solution, I would want to have the same line um, represented. Let's see, where's my black marker? I lost it on my last question. Almost there, I found it. I'm going to use it. So the infinite solutions uh, for the last one here, we're going to have the same line. So we could write y is equal to 3x plus 9, or we could write multiples of that. 2y equals 6x plus 18, something like that. They are the same line when you um, put them into lowest terms. So um, I hope you learned a lot throughout the course. I hope you learned a lot about uh, um, solving equations in this lesson in particular. Uh, and I hope that you're compelled to carry on with math. And if, please, if you have any questions at all about anything that we've done, let me know. Um, and thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.